So I am considering stopping to masturbate to seem more attractive to the girl I like. Does it make sense? Great question. Quirky, hilarious, and maybe gross. These are the things you are afraid to ask your doctor. All right, let's dive right in. I have a really strange question. Is it a bad thing to crack my penis? It was something I did at a younger age and always wondered if it was really bad to do, so I stopped doing it. The penis is not a bone, so you can't pop it like a joint like your finger would. You could almost like break your penis or snap it when you have an erection and you have the erectile tissue, you have this other type of connective tissue called the tunica albuginea, which basically is this connective tissue that if you bend it in a certain direction, it can actually snap so you bend and snap and it's gonna turn purple blue you're gonna like get a lot of blood in there best bet is get to the hospital ASAP the sooner the better if the blood sits in there for too long it actually can fibrose and turn into tissue and then you it'll end up having erectile dysfunction so if this ever happens to anybody boom get to the hospital immediately get to a urologist immediately and hopefully everything gets saved is it possible to have wrinkles on your forehead at 18 years old and if so what could cause it wrinkles have to do with our tissue and so as we get older, we're at more risk of getting wrinkles relating to the tissue elasticity, the subcutaneous tissue underneath. So as we get older, we actually lose like the fat that's underneath our skin. And then also environmental factors having to do with like hydration of the tissue. Is it dry, smoking, bad diet? If you're starting to see that you're having wrinkling of your skin, think about those things. And then am I doing anything else extracurricularly? And is that potentially aging my skin? Then what can you do to help it? It has to do with using sunscreens to protect you because the sun can also age your skin. Hydration of your skin via moisturizers. Vitamin C is really important. So there's a lot of other factors. And if you're really, really concerned, we have dermatologists. We have doctors that actually could help and give suggestions of what you can do to help with your skin. At 18 years of age, I would definitely get checked out, make sure everything's kind of in check because I would be worried that your skin is aging faster than it should to figure out what could be causing you to get wrinkled faster. Hi doc, I get massive canker sores quite often, like once a month, and they usually last about a week. I'm the only one in my family who gets them. What could be the reason why I get them so often and why they stay for so long? Canker sore could be related to chewing weird, toothpaste, going to the dentist, or if you're fighting a different type of infection somewhere else in your body and your immune system's kicked up, sometimes that stress can actually cause canker sore. But how do you actually treat these? They're gonna go away on their own, but what you can do to kind of help them along is you can rinse with baking soda or salt water and then just good oral hygiene will actually help reduce how often you get them and also be aware of the things that might trigger it we don't realize but a lot of foods can trigger it sodas anything salty it just depends on your body why are parts of my body hairier than others excluding the head it's how we've evolved different areas have more dense hair follicles armpits your groin, your genital areas, chest, arms, and legs. Those areas are sensitive to androgens. That's a type of androgenic hair that grows in that area, and it's both male and female. Men typically have more production of it, thus you have more hair as a male, darker hair typically, but it's different than the hair that we have on our head. That is a separate type of hormone, but the hair that we have is all related to how our hormones are interactive with the production of hair and the thickness of the hair and how dark it is. Here's a weird question. When wiping after using the bathroom, sometimes I wipe a bit too hard, I'll feel very brief, sharp tingling sensation in my arm. Not the arm I'm using to wipe. What's going on there? Is this a documented phenomenon? So interesting question, right? Sometimes we can touch an area of our body that we don't think is correlated. Let me give you an example. Sometimes gallbladder pain, which is the right upper quadrant of your belly, will also give you shoulder pain. And it has to do with the fact that the nerves are interconnected and it has to do with your diaphragm. Your butthole is basically innervated by your pudendal nerve and there's other overlapping nerves, but it has to do with like nerves coming from your sacrum in that area, lower lumbar, sacral areas, but mostly from the sacrum. So when you're wiping, that's that's where you're getting the sensation from. So you shouldn't typically have your arm related to the sacrum because your arm is getting innervated higher up. The nerves of your arm are related to your cervical nerves. 
but there's overlap. Just at first glance, it doesn't seem too dire, but obviously discuss it with your healthcare provider. What is the best way to prevent bad breath even if you brush your teeth in the morning? Great question. Bad breath has multiple reasons. Biggest reason is not brushing your teeth because you just let the bacteria overgrow in your mouth and bacteria will produce foul smells. So sometimes if there's food in there, it'll be broken down. We should be brushing our teeth after every meal, especially when we wake up in the morning. Rise and shine. Some of us are mouth breathers, so your mouth is open. And then you wanna get any food out after eating. You can potentially have bad breath, which is also called halitosis, from gastric content. So sometimes as the digestive juices in your stomach and the intestines are going, you're having the breakdown of food, but with the bacteria, you can have foul smelling, malodorous breath because of the digestive process. I read somewhere that after a few weeks of not masturbating, men have higher testosterone levels than when they do it regularly. I also read that testosterone is like a pheromone that women can sense. So it makes one more attractive. So I am considering stopping to masturbate to seem more attractive to the girl I like. Does it make sense? Good question. Okay, studies have shown that if you masturbate or other sexual activities, in the short term, you will have a slight increase in testosterone. But there are no long-term studies to basically show if there are long-term effects of this spike of testosterone. On the flip side, abstinence has also been shown to have a slight increase in testosterone in a short period of time to roughly three to seven days or so. If you're having sexual relations, you might have a slight increase in testosterone. Now we're talking about our pheromones right? There was a study out of UC Berkeley that took a derivative of testosterone, put it basically in a jar, and had a certain amount of women basically sniff it. The study actually showed that this derivative of testosterone did increase arousal or that sensation within these women. One could then conclude from that that we all need to work out more. So based on the information that we know, the research that's out there, we know we need to get those pheromones going. We need to get sweating. So my suggestion get exercising, get your sweat on, get those pheromones flying. Hopefully those pheromones are gonna reach that girl that you like solves the problem. If there is, what is the fastest way to get rid of cough with phlegm? And why do I sometimes feel nauseous when coughing out phlegm? The fastest way to get phlegm out is to cough it out. Literally our body's mechanism is to now, sometimes at the hospital, we have something called an acapella valve, where you actually can cough into this little egg looking device and it actually helps suck out the phlegm. But you have to basically get over whatever is causing you to have this cough and phlegm. You can have a bacterial infection, you can have a viral infection. There are a lot of different things that actually can increase the sputum production. First, identifying what is actually causing you to have this type of production of mucus and phlegm. If you have a bacterial infection, you're gonna need to take antibiotic. If you have a viral infection, Infection, you need to basically take medicines to help you get over the virus, which is over the counter stuff and good healthy food, drink. Another thing to maybe avoid would be avoid any like dairy products because that'll actually increase your phlegm stickiness of the mucus. So those were some great questions, thought provoking. I hope you guys learned something. Keep them coming, send them my way. If they're good and I think somebody's gonna learn from it, we'll throw it in there. And make sure that you definitely binge watch this series right here and as always, make Make sure you subscribe, turn those bell notifications on, hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.